What's up, YouTubers? Wait, is the mic on? The mic's on. What's up, YouTubers? Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing well out there today. So, today's video is, I guess, the start of a quote unquote series I want to do. In the last video, my studio tour, I mentioned I have a pedal board right below me that is pretty empty, that is not really functioning, but I said that I would like to make that into a Robin Ford inspired pedal board. Well, today I decided, let's start the journey. I don't know how long it'll take, maybe a couple months, but hey, this is the first episode in the series, I guess, so I guess the series would be called Building a Robin Ford inspired pedal board. So let's dive into what's going into the pedal board and what I'm trying to expect out of it. So let's go. So the main goal of this pedal board is to be light and easily portable. Now a small pedal board that won't break my back and that'll easily fit in the seat next to me in the car. And that is pretty much inspired by this Robin Ford pedal board right here. So with that being said, let's dive into the pedals and see what we're putting on there. First things first, a good pedal board needs a tuner. And in my case, I'm using the Diodario strobe tuner. Now I won't go full OCD and buy another poly tune like Robin Ford does because tuners are tuners. So this one does the job. Up next is the only drive pedal on the pedal board. And that is the Vertex Ultraphonics. Why am I choosing this? Because my favorite and main amp is my Overdrive Special by Wellagen. And this thing is heavy. So when I can't take this, the Ultraphonics will give me similar Dumble Overdrive Special tones without breaking my back. And it goes perfectly into clean platform amps like Howard Deluxe's or Fender Deluxe Reverb. So Ultraphonics on the board. Next up is the boost. Now, Robin uses the Vertex boost. I have one also, but in my case, I'm gonna use the RSC booster. I like it more because I have two band EQ, the bass and treble, and also have gain, so I can really make it a clean boost, or if I want, I can add some grit to it. But for my purpose, it'll be after the ultraphonics as a pure volume boost. So if I need more of the same tone, engage this, and it'll just be the same tone, but louder. Last up of the pedals that I currently do have is my delay, and that'll be the TC Flashback. Now, Robin, if you've seen his recent video on Facebook, he uses a Stratman Timeline, which I have in my other pedal board, but this one is smaller, and I guess also gray tone in the 2290 setting, which I'll be using. Robin famously used 2290s in the past when he used to carry his Dumble later with his Dumble, which he no longer does, hence why he uses his Zen Drive. Um, and runs everything in the front of the amp. But in my purpose, you'll see in, in a bit, I want to make an interface that I can use the effects loop in my overdrive special, which will allow me to use the delay in the loop. Up next are the three pedals I don't have currently. The first one being an electroharmonics pog, a mini pog to be exact. Again, if you've seen Robin's recent video on Facebook showing his rig, the pog is awesome. He plays these really cool bebop jazz lines on there, going for a more organ sound, which I think would be a really cool effect to have on the pedal board as well. Up next, Robin uses a full tone Deja Vibe. I don't really want to support full tone because of what he said in the past, so I would love to get a way huge blue hippo for a chorus effect, slash vibrato. And lastly, maybe one of the more important pedals on the board is a regret pedal. Now Robin uses a TC Hall of Fame, and I'll see if I can get the same thing, because that has great settings, and those work pretty well with Fender amps and everything else around. So those two pedals I don't have, which we'll get sometime, and I'll keep you updated. The next two pedals I would love to have on the board aren't effects pedals, but more rather for functionality. The first one being is a Vertex interface that my buddy Mason makes and has the schematics online for. It's pretty simple. And what that does is allows you to run your pedal board for a cable method. So in my case it would be reverb and delay in the loop of the amp, or it allows you to run everything in the front of the amp because not every amp has effects loop. So it's great to have the capability to run in the effects loop or everything in the front of the amp. Next one, again, functionality, nothing crazy, is a Dumble foot switch with a removable cable. So I can keep the Dumble foot switch on the pedal board at all times and not carry around the stock one. Again, 
Nothing crazy, not the end of the world for these pedals, but again, it's just mere thing of practicality. So, pedal wise, that's the goal. Let's check out the pedal board. So, the pedal board is right here. This is one that my buddy Mason from Vertex gave to me, and it's actually one of the prototype Vertex pedal boards that he gave me about six months ago, right before COVID happened, and it's been sitting in my office ever since, just doing nothing. So. I thought this would be a perfect board for this Robin Ford inspired pedal board, and I'm not sure on the dimensions about it, but it, it'll fit everything. I'm almost positive. So, here's the pedal board. Next up, let's look at the power supply. So, power supply time, uh, classic. I don't have one yet, but I can tell you it won't be modular or anything like that. It'll most likely be a True Tone CS7. I think a CS12 will be too big, but CS7 will be perfect, and True Tone makes some of the best power supplies currently. So. Why not go with them? So next up, and maybe the most important, cables. I'm not gonna use solderless. You guys know me, I'm not a big fan of solderless cables, so we're gonna use real cables. These are from Bestronics. Again, a gift from my buddy Mason months ago. He's the man who makes the best pedal boards in the game today. And yeah, we'll solder all these to length and it won't be nothing crazy to use. Um, cables, gotta love them. Solder your cables. <laughs> so, I think that pretty much covers everything pedal board wise. Now, again, I want to reiterate that this won't take a couple of days. It'll probably take weeks or months at most because it takes time to accumulate these pedals, build interfaces and stuff like that, soldering, actually building the pedal board with all the pedals on there. So it takes time and I'll do my best to record everything when I can, when pedals arrive, how they sound. And ultimately, the last video obviously will be a reveal of the pedal board. Um, and how it sounds, tones, because Robin Ford is one, one of my heroes and I have an old special like he does. So why not make a similar board to what he uses? And I think it'll be a great learning experience overall. So if you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down below. I'm not gonna use solar list, I'm not gonna use modular power supply, so don't try me on those. Um, so yeah, very exciting journey. I hope you stay along with me for this series. I don't know how many episodes it'll be, but be fun for all of us. So thank you all for watching today's video. Hope you liked it. If you did, press like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.